A legendary diesel locomotive, fully restored and ready to return to service. Hey, Dave. Yeah, it's all good, mate. Can an expert team haul this precious engine across the country? Clean behind you now. Ready for a diesel gala without scratching its pristine paintwork. Just keep your eye on the trees on the right hand side. The team must battle treacherous traffic. Don't worry too much about rushing out into the first lane. Narrow country lanes. All good at the back, Dave. And the tightest of squeezes. Oh, that's risky. To deliver this historic locomotive on time. Best of luck with that one, Dave. <laughs> it's a titanic task, even for the world's toughest train truckers. <laughs> Chesterfield, Barrow Hill. Home to the Roundhouse Halt Engine Repair Workshops. For the last three years, workers at this busy site have been looking after engine 55009, also known as a Lissadon. This is a Deltic, an iconic class of diesel locomotive. You never miss a Deltic. You hear them first, and then uh, it's just uh, a quite an exciting noise as it goes past. Originally, they were, they were painted in two-tone green when they first came out. They were repainted from 1968 onwards into the corporate rail blue. These locomotives are an example of British engineering and really need to be preserved. Deltics were first introduced in 1961 and ran on the East Coast Railway line between London and Edinburgh. 22 Deltics were built. They replaced a fleet of 55 steam trains that included the celebrated Flying Scotsman. Compared to their steam cousins, they were fast and efficient, and they completely transformed train travel. They were running at 100 mile an hour where they could. Yeah, they were fairly swift. They could do London to Edinburgh in four hours. With 3,300 horsepower at their disposal, they were the most powerful locomotives in the world. They were fast. They had great acceleration. They could stop better. They didn't need to keep stopping for coal and water. And just the overall performance was far better than a steam engine. People living in, in London who wanted to go to Scotland and vice versa. You, know, you could have a business meeting at midday, leave home early morning, go, get home at tea time. Whereas previously with the steam trains taking over seven hours each way, it was an overnight stay. The secret of the Deltic success was the innovative design of their twin 1650 horsepower engines. They were a unique engine. They were a twin engine, lightweight aluminium engine, so they could produce a lot more power. They were a, a deltic shaped engine, which is, means they were an opposed piston. So it was a, a German idea originally for aeroplanes. The engine was then developed for marine use and eventually onto rail traction. The, the Deltics weigh around about 100 tonnes full up with fuel and water, and they used to pull between 12 and 15 coaches, around about 500 tonnes. Strong and fast, Elicidon is aptly named. The name Elicidon comes from a, a racehorse. I think it was nine of the locomotives were named after it, uh, racehorses. They were stabled in Finsbury Park in London. But just like the steam trains they replaced, the introduction of high-speed trains signalled the end of the Deltics. Elicidon was decommissioned in 1982 and was bought by a group of enthusiasts known as the Deltic Preservation Society. They now own three locomotives that are loaned out to Heritage Railways throughout the UK. But in 2019, Elicidon once again ran into trouble. It was working a train from Edinburgh to King's Cross and it suffered a flashover on the way in March 2019, which is a surge of electrical current which caused the traction motors to fail. So it was taken back to the Deltic Preservation Society who assessed it and realised the extent of the damage. 
For the last three years, teams of engineers have carried out over half a million pounds worth of repairs. Now, the time has finally come to get the engine back to work. Loco is being moved today to go to the Great Central Railway where they can do higher speed running tests so that we can check all the electrical circuits and the air system. All being well after the tests, Elicidon will be the star attraction at Great Central Railway's Diesel Gala. Only one thing stands in the engine's way. 54 miles of busy motorways and winding roads. 90 miles south is a company that devises unique solutions to problems like this. Alley's heavy haulage. Family-run firm Alley's are experts at the challenging task of moving heavyweight railway locomotives. Founded in the 1950s by Morris Alley, the business has grown to become one of the trusted names in the heavy haulage industry. We can move anything. Massive abnormal loads, enormous steel girders, mega yachts, and super long lengths of pipe, as well as locomotives of all shapes and sizes, are just part of their day-to-day -day operations, both in the UK and around the world. Moving Trains is a very specialist industry, and we're one of the few companies within the UK that can actually move these big trains and locomotives. Nobody expects to see a loco on the back of a lorry. There's never a day when you see it where it's not impressive. Today, the crew need to be at the very top of their game. Not a problem. Taking on this mega move, our lead driver, Zach. Escort driver, Harry. And ramp builder, Dave. With the team on site, their first job of the day is to line up the trailer in exactly the right position, ready for loading. Keep it coming. As Zach steers the truck, Harry uses the remote control to independently steer the trailer's wheels. Keep it coming, mate. But a concrete wall, just a foot away from the railway track, immediately causes problems. Right back to the low, so I think we might have the fun that wall actually. Yeah, go on, aim over on the path there. Parking so close to the wall is far from ideal, but it's the only way they can get in the right position for loading. Oh, we'll stop there, mate. We will load the trailer down and get all the axles. With the truck safely in position, the next job for the team is to build the loading ramp. The Deltic engine is more than 21 metres long, so the ramp needs to be long and shallow. I don't want eight pieces, I want 16 pieces. Oh. As long as the rain holds off, it keeps stop starting a bit, doesn't it? They use a crane to carefully lower each section of the ramp into place. With the three ramp sections in position, the team use pieces of plywood to pack any gaps. It won't be long now until Elicidon is finally on the move again. We're at Barrow Hill now to collect this Delta, which, from what they're telling us, hasn't been used for a few years. It's had a few problems. And we're taking it to Great Central. And it's going down there for some testing, hopefully, for them to put it back into use. The journey from Barrow Hill in Chesterfield to Great Central Railway near Loughborough is only 54 miles and would normally take just under an hour. But with narrow roads and a maximum speed of 30 miles an hour, the best Zach can hope for is a journey time of just under four. Mileage-wise, it's not long. It's just, obviously, we're, we're heavy, so that's one thing. And then there's quite a few hills. Some testing, hopefully. Yeah. But we'll be slow anyway. On the flat, we'll be slow, so... If we don't make it in four and a half hours, you have to have a break. 
much as we think we should do it in four hours, you can't, you know, there might be something unforeseen on the road that you can't, you know, you can't plan for, so it's very much take it as it comes. Before they can even think about the drive, there's the matter of getting 100 tonnes of metal onto the back of their trailer. Building the ramp that will hold it is painstaking work that can't be rushed. After two hours, the crew is ready to begin the next crucial phase of the move. Now that the team have built the extra long ramp for their extra long load, they can begin to winch the engine up. The ramp's shallow angle will lift it gently. But as it moves onto the trailer, the low-slung diesel tanks could catch on the edge. To guard against this, the crew must use the hydraulics to lift the front of the trailer and lower the back end so its slope matches that of the ramp. Only when the Deltic is fully on the trailer can they lower it back down to secure it. They fire up the hydraulics to adjust the slope of the trailer. When everything is set, Zach hooks up a Lissadon to the winch, ready to inch the engine up onto the ramp. But there's a problem. A small wooden braking block known as a chock is in the way. So the chock's stuck. There is, there is a slight gradient this way. So where they've parked it on the chocks, this chock is actually stuck like we can't get it out. Dave's just trying to lever a little bit of pressure off just to release the chock. The engine is sitting on a slight decline, with 100 tonnes of force pushing hard into the wooden block. This stops the winch from being able to pull the engine up the ramp. For now, Elicidon is going nowhere. After three years of painstaking restoration work, the Deltic 55009, otherwise known as Elicidon, is ready to begin its journey to Great Central Railway near Loughborough. But there's a problem. What's that that you do with that? What's it? A wooden chock is wedged firmly under one of its wheels, and Zach can't get it to budge. Gonna... A Deltic locomotive weighs 100 tons. Done that. And all Dave's got to move it is a crowbar. Graham thinks if with a pinch bar, you'll move it off his chock. Zach yeah. needs Dave to push the engine back just half an inch. Oh, that's the best way to do it. But it will take all the strength he can muster. Push it, push, push it in where you are. And push down on the bar. Dave and the crowbar aren't enough. Time to bring in the big guns. Yeah, so long, yeah. Don't, I'd, get, I'd do it from that side, probably. Right? Go up, as long as you're not going to trap yourself. <laughs> Marvellous. Yeah, OK. Your point looked good, Dave, yeah? They're off. Yeah. After being out of action for three years, 55009 is finally on the move again. Second wheel, all right, Dave? Yeah. Once celebrated for speeds of up to 100 miles an hour, today it's winched inch by inch. Just pin in the rail down, mate. Along the rail track and up the ramp. Yeah. Zach's eagle eyes monitor every move. The slightest misalignment could cause disaster. Elicidon has 12 wheels, all with fixed axles that cannot steer. So as the crew winch the loco up, 
the wheels must transition perfectly from the railway tracks up onto the ramp rails. There's a real risk that the ramp could move during loading. Just a small slip could cause the engine to derail. Zach knows nothing is safe until all six sets of wheels are sitting firmly on the ramp. Three sets of wheels are on. So far, so good. Harry, keep an eye on that drum. Harry is on winch duty. It's crucial that the cable doesn't overlap as it winds in around this cylinder, which could cause it to snap. While Harry watches the winch, Dave and Zach keep a close eye on the all-important rear wheels. After minutes that feel like hours, the back wheels are finally set to transition onto the ramp. as the front wheels pass safely onto the trailer. OK, Dave? Yeah, all good, mate. All good in the Barrow Hill hood? Oh, yes. With the winch cable taking the strain of the 100-tonne engine, Zach and Dave have chocks at the ready should it snap. Keep your chock in really tight for a minute, Dave. Yeah. Chuck hard in, Dave. Yeah. Elicidon is more than 21 metres long, and its resting position on the trailer must be precise. Zach needs to make sure that its weight is evenly distributed across the whole trailer. Hold it there, mate. If it's too far forward, it will put too much pressure on the trailer's front axles and tow bar. If it's too far back, it will put pressure on the rear. Dave? Yes, mate. Just pull your chock back an inch off the wheel. Yeah. Harry, off and back on. Oh, uh, you know. Yeah, I only want it to go a midge. Okay, Dave, put your chock right in, mate, please. Yeah, you're in, mate. Hold it right there. Stay there a minute. Zach's positioning is spot on, and the engine is ready to be chained down for the journey. With 12 wheels to secure, they're going to need a lot of chains and a lot of protective pads. Obviously, you can see it's well looked after and maintained. Somebody cares about it, so the last thing they're going to want is me to come along and take all the paint off. While Zach secures the chains, Dave and Harry load the ramp back onto Dave's truck, ready for the journey ahead. One side of the engine is now secure. I've got one more I need to magic up out of somewhere this side at the moment, but... There's just the front left set of wheels still to chain. But there seems to be a problem. Watch out for the bird poo. The concrete wall that made parking the trailer so tricky when they arrived is now making it almost impossible to secure the engine. That's risky. A good job is scampy was 12 hours ago. We've got to move it away from the wall so you can put the last four yeah, man. chains on. Yeah, I'm here, mate. Moving the trailer clear of the wall is no simple task. 
it could be a hairy ride. The front wheels of the engine are not secured and the wall is just a few inches away. If the team don't keep the trailer perfectly straight as they move it, the rear wheels could slip down into the railway siding, tilting the trailer and tipping out the engine. Back to the left, please. As Zach reverses the truck, there's a rail there. Harry independently steers the rear wheels. He makes tiny adjustments to keep the trailer away from the wall and the siding. Keep it coming. Yeah, hold it there, mate. You'll be able to get all to the chains at that. They pull clear of the wall. The team race to secure the rest of the engine. But this delay has put them well behind schedule. They're now up against the clock to leave the yard and hit the road before rush hour kicks in. This precious Deltic diesel engine, Elicidon, has been out of action for the last three years. But today, after extensive repairs, heavy haulage experts are transporting it to Great Central Railway's Spring Bank Holiday Gala for a grand public unveiling. Lead driver Zach is in charge of the precious cargo, while ramp builder Dave will follow behind. Their first task is to negotiate the tight turn out of the yard. All the pressure rests on the youngest member of the team, Harry. Zach's truck and trailer has a wheelbase of 23 meters. This makes tight corners almost impossible to steer around. Harry has remote control of the trailer's wheels. This should help him to slowly steer the trailer around the tight bend and out of the yard. Just keep your eye on the trees on the right hand side, I don't want it to go in the trees, okay? Today's journey is a 54 mile trek, but loads this big and heavy don't move quickly. Once they have negotiated the outskirts of Chesterfield, they'll join the motorway. Depending on traffic, they're hoping to reach Great Central Railway in time to unload before it gets dark. The estimated journey time is four hours. Tight turn negotiated. Finally, they're off. This load stretches three meters wide. The engine and trailer take up a lot of room on the road. Harry drives ahead in the escort vehicle to warn Zach of any approaching hazards. Last car at the minute is that red Kia. Um, I'll let you know what the last one is, if there is any more. While Dave keeps a close eye from the rear. All good at the back, Dave. Your back end is looking beautiful, Zach. Oh, thank you. That's just what I like to hear that, Dave. Zach, Dave and Harry are now a well-oiled machine. I'm behind you now. Yeah, man. Negotiating twists and turns with their 100-ton load that soars nearly five metres high. Mm. 
They are tracing a pre-planned route plotted out by the team back at base. In my role, most of the obstacles and challenges are quite literally bridges. Over bridges, under bridges, viaducts, you name it. Wherever it is on the road, I know where it is. We'll have a lot of conversations with structure owners to make sure that we're facilitating what they require for us to do in order to be able to traverse over their structures. And whether that's dropping the trailer down or lifting it up or spreading the weight a little bit more, then we'll make sure that we accommodate. There's a roundabout somewhere that I am going to wrong side, OK? Um, you'll be turning right at it. Yeah, yeah. With this roundabout successfully negotiated, the team are making good time. But there's still 46 miles to their final destination, Great Central Railway near Loughborough. The Great Central Railway is the only heritage line which has double track on in other words, trains can pass each other throughout the journey. Lissadon has been progressively rebuilt after its failure in 2019, and those repairs were completed at the start of this year. So rather than test it on the main line, testing it at Heritage Railway is better. It can run at 60 miles an hour when testing vehicles, which is very useful. Testing Lissadon's electrics after three years of repairs will begin almost as soon as it arrives. But first, there's a slip road to negotiate. And with a maximum speed of just 30 miles per hour, joining a busy motorway requires intense concentration. Don't worry too much about rushing out into the first lane, mate. Let me use all the, uh, all the slip road, all right? They are on, and for the first time today, Zach, Harry and Dave can begin to relax. It's going to be pretty slow up here in a minute, Bobby, if you just want to let a bit of a bigger gap open up, please, mate. The crew make light work of the busy motorway and arrive at Loughborough before the night draws in. It's been a long day, but the team's job isn't yet done. Dave will uh, start setting up behind us, and then, um, yeah, we'll get the ramp down and get it, start getting it off. Now, Zach, Dave and Harry must rebuild the ramp to offload the engine. The crane lifts the sections of the ramp off Dave's trailer. It's a bit hard to see because that one's all wet. We'll drop it and if we have to move it, we'll move it. Each section needs to be carefully positioned, then bolted together. Zach's in an upbeat mood. It couldn't have gone any better. It came out well, the roads were quiet. Even just coming through Loughborough, I thought it was going to be traffic starting, but it shows the difference half turn makes. Dave and Zach have been working together for 16 years. Harry joined the team a year ago. I've probably only been doing drawbar stuff like this trailer since the start of this year. I get on with everyone, to be honest. There's, not, there's no one in the company I don't get on with. The team have been on the clock for six hours now, and their day still isn't over. They have to unload the engine in daylight. Not prepared to unload something like this in the dark. If it was a bit later and we was getting, it was starting to get dark, it wouldn't be happening. With the ramp built, Harry takes control of the trailer. Keep it coming. Keep it coming, mate. He keeps in constant communication with truck driver Zach. Keep it coming. They slowly line up the trailer with the unloading ramp. Keep it coming. Slow it down. You're about 
too fucked now, mate. The team need to achieve inch perfect accuracy. Just like loading, any misalignments or gaps would be disastrous. The crunch point are the small rails that link the trailer to the unloading ramp. They are known as jump rails and are the point where everything can go wrong. Oh, yes, we'll be coming back a bit. Go on, Bob, lower him down on the steady. It's vital that the trailer and ramp are perfectly lined up. Even small deviations can cause big problems. One's pulling the wrong way. Yeah, the one's pulling to the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can leave nothing to chance. With the jump rails in place, the team unchain the engine and reattach the winch. To you. The winch takes up the slack to control the speed of the descent. The team have chocks at the ready in case they need to make an emergency stop. As the engine slowly crawls down the ramp, Zach and Dave watch every move. Right, Dave. Yeah, good, man. Good. Go, Dave. After three years, Elicidon is about to begin a new chapter. It's a big moment, even if it does require a final nudge of encouragement from Dave. Best of luck with that one, Dave. <laughs> Happy? Yeah. Chocked both ways. Three years ago, some doubted if Deltic locomotive Elicidon would ever run again. Now it's ready to join Great Central Railway's family of vintage steam and diesel engines. Job done. It's always good when they safely offloaded. Uh, there's been a lot of hard work from the people who own it. So for us to deliver it all safe and sound, is nice that a lot of money been invested in in building it and getting it here to test it. In a couple of weeks' time, this engine will be the star of a spectacular diesel gala. But first, it has to undergo rigorous testing, and that begins tomorrow. It's the weekend of the diesel gala at Great Central Railway near Loughborough. This is the UK's only double-track mainline heritage railway. Six engines will be running along eight miles of track to provide more than 4,000 passenger journeys. We have our own fleet of heritage diesels. Um, we've currently got eight, um, but people like to come and see different varieties, different types of locomotive. And we like to ring the changes with guests by bringing in locos from other railways or indeed from other organisations. All the classes of locomotives you can see here today, with the exception of the 37 and the 20, they're all extinct on the network. Elicidon is here in all its glory. It hasn't made a public appearance since it broke down in 2019. It's taken half a million pounds and a team of engineers three years to bring it back to life. For the last two weeks, engineers have been testing the locomotive on the main line to make sure that it's ready. 
for days like this. This loco, it, it suffered a, a very serious electrical failure in March 2019. It, very badly damaged number of electrical machines um, which had to be professionally repaired and obviously at the same time I've taken the opportunity to overhaul uh, a lot of the control equipment at, at greater expense as well replace a lot of tired old wiring and things and really trying to get them back into tip-top condition after a thorough investigation graham is confident they have identified the engine's problems so it's been, a, it's been a long and blood, sweat and tears type journey and learning along the way, as you always do. Now we're beginning to see the benefit. The Deltic attracts crowds of more than 1,500 visitors. Uh, departure for all stations to Leicester North. Would they please join the train now, standing up platform at number one. Making sure everything runs smoothly and on time. <laughs> is station master John Fern. Um, 2.30, it's the uh, 37, the green 37. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's two bells, so that signifies this as a train due into platform two in the next couple of minutes. I am actually the senior station master here, so uh, I am in charge of all the station staff and um, a lot of what goes on on the station. So, but today I am down as duty station master, so I am basically in charge of the platform. It's nice to see people's reactions to the trains. Um, too much today, you tend to see people are too involved with their smartphones and their iPads and things like that, you know, but it's just nice to be down here, mixing with people, seeing people enjoy seeing our heritage trains running, and um, it's just a nice atmosphere. Joining Elicidon at the gala, are some of the most iconic diesel locomotives ever to run on Britain's railways. Engines like Tintin Totter, class 20 D9098. Built in 1961, its large cab side windows give it a distinctive look. A BR class 25 D5185 is also here. It was constructed in 1963 and has a Sulzer six-cylinder diesel engine producing 1,250 horsepower. It was built for general purpose mixed traffic and wasn't decommissioned until 1987. There are plenty of iconic engines to choose from, but the star of the show for many is Deltic Locomotive 55009, Elicidon and seeing it out and about at the gala for the first time since 2019 is causing much excitement. We've driven up from Peterborough today for the Great Central Railway Diesel Gala. The sound of a, a Delta really does take you back to my childhood, Bring, brings back some great memories. And, and also the smell of the diesel, strangely enough. <laughs> In my opinion, the Deltics were the supreme locomotive of the diesels that were available in the United Kingdom at the time. But it is one of the most powerful diesels that was built of its time, and hence why it is one of the most popular. Also here to witness Elicidon's return is the Deltic Preservation Society. This is a Mug of 55009. That'll be a popular one today. I think it's a generation thing. I was born just as a steam was phasing out, so obviously I've grown up with the diesels and Delta in particular. I was born and brought up about 100 yards from East Coast Main Line, so I could see the Delta from my bedroom window. And as I got attached to them, I started going down to the station watching them. And I started riding on them in this way mid 70s, and I followed them ever since then. It's the sound of the locos, the look of the locos, and the fact that there's only 22 of them that, that stood out from every other class of loco. You can get very excited with them. It's been a challenging journey for 55009. 
But for fans, seeing one of the most loved and iconic diesel locomotives running on a mainline is a real thrill. It's important to preserve diesel locomotives because they tell an important part of the story of the railways. They revolutionised the railways in the 1960s, being cleaner, cheaper and less labour intensive to operate. They might not have the affection that steam has with the general public, but for rail enthusiasts, particularly many who are now of that age where they were brought up only on diesels, they are their childhood and they are their memories. The Deltics were very popular because they were an iconic design, but the most important thing is that they did speed up journey times, reduce costs and become more efficient. It's been quite a weekend, a real testament to all the hours and money that's gone into getting the engine here. And now Elicidon has been given a taste of what its next chapter will bring. There's been a fantastic turnout. There's a lot of Deltic followers here today. When I turn up at events like this, on nice sunny days like this, I see a lot of visitors coming through the door, riding on the trains. It gives you a buzz inside because they come in and they're appreciated all the hard work that you've done. We've got to London quite a lot on the on the new trains, but they, they, they ain't got the character of these old ones, have they? They're not comfortable, are they? These are lovely and comfy, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, big bouncy seats. Yeah, don't clicky, don't clickety don't clack rail track. That's the train now standing at platform number two, is the 135 for Quarterwood House. It's been, been a really good day, and, and the weather's been superb. So, yeah, all in all, a fantastic day. for the nostalgia and I enjoy just looking at anything frankly really anything old from the workshops at Barrow Hill to the adoration of gala crowds at Great Central Railway Elicidon is back on the tracks I came in here as a, as a child with my granddad and I'm now bringing my son here and I would hope to think that my son could bring his children here eventually